You know, it is great to be at Kettering, a university that's teaching the next generation of leaders and training workers to have the skills they need to advance their own careers and their own communities. Now, for months, the state of our economy has dominated the headlines. And as all of you know, the news has not been good. The subprime lending debacle has sent the housing market into a tailspin and caused a broader contraction in the credit markets. Over 360,000 jobs have been lost since the beginning of this year. Unemployment has registered the biggest one-month jump since February of 1986. Incomes have failed to compete, uh, keep pace with the rising costs of health insurance and college tuition. And record oil and food prices have left families struggling just to keep up. But, of course, grim economic news is nothing new to Flint, and it's nothing new to Michigan. George Bush and Washington may not have noticed, but manufacturing jobs have been leaving here for decades now. Incomes have been declining for decades now. The jobs that have replaced those lost jobs pay less and offer fewer, if any, benefits. Hardworking Americans who could once count on a single paycheck to support their families have not only lost jobs, but they've lost their health care and their pensions as well. You've got CEOs who are getting golden parachutes at a time when pensions are being dumped. Worst of all, many have lost confidence in that fundamental American promise that our children will have a better life than we have had. That's the essence of the American dream, that the next generation does better than we have. So these are challenging times. And that's why I spent last week talking about immediate steps we need to provide working Americans with relief. Not relief later, but relief right now. It starts with a broad-based middle-class tax cut, $1,000 per family, to help offset the rising costs of gas and food. A foreclosure prevention fund to help stabilize the, the housing market and, and keep people in their homes. A health care plan that lowers costs and gives those without health insurance the same kind of coverage that members of Congress have. A commitment to retirement security that stabilizes Social Security and provides workers a means to increase savings. And a plan to crack down on unfair and sometimes deceptive lending in the credit card and housing markets to help families climb out of crippling debt and stay out of debt in the first place. Now, these steps that I've proposed are all paid for, and they're designed to restore balance and fairness to the American economy after years of Bush administration policies that tilted the playing field in favor of the wealthy and the well-connected. But the truth is that none of these steps, none of these short-term steps alone will ensure America's future. Yes, we have to make sure that the economic pie is sliced more fairly. But we also have to make sure that the economic pie is growing. Yes, we need to provide immediate help to families who are struggling in places like Flint. But we also need a serious plan to create new jobs and new industries here in Flint and here in Michigan. In other words, we can't simply return to the strategies of the past, for we're living through an age of fundamental economic transformation. Technology has changed the way we live and the way the world does business. 
the collapse of the Soviet Union, the advance of capitalism, have vanquished old challenges to America's global leadership. But new challenges have emerged from China and India and Eastern Europe, even countries like Brazil. Jobs and industries can move to any country with an internet connection and willing workers. And Michigan's children will grow up facing competition, not just from kids in California or South Carolina, but also from young people in Beijing and Bangalore. You know, a few years ago, I saw a picture of this new reality during a visit to Google's headquarters in California. Towards the end of the tour, I was brought into a room where there was a three-dimensional image of the Earth that rotated on a large flat panel monitor. And across this image, there, there, there were countless lights in different colors all around this globe. And I asked what those lights signified, and a young engineer explained that the lights represented all of the internet searches taking place all around the world. Each color represented a different language. And the image was mesmerizing, a picture of a world where old boundaries are disappearing, a world where communication, connection, and competition can come from anywhere. Now, there are some who believe that we must try to turn back the clock on this new world, no. that the only chance to maintain our living standard is to build a fortress around America, to stop trading with other countries, to shut down immigration, rely on old industries. I disagree. Not only, not only is it impossible to turn back the tide of globalization, but efforts to do so can actually make us worse off. So rather than fear the future, we have to embrace it. I have no doubt that America can compete and succeed in the 21st century. And I know as well that more than anything else, success will not depend on our government. It will depend on the dynamism and determination and innovation of the American people. 